Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is weeknights. We know what we came to do five nights a week. Tell y'all the latest, the greatest, and the shameless, and all the goings-ons in the entertainment and pop culture industries. And before we get into our hot topics and some fun stuff, gotta introduce ourselves. Who you yep. be? I'm Dash. AKA Dashing D, AKA the King of R and B. That's right. That. You gotta get you a crown at some point. You know what I mean? Something, something Even if it's from Burger King, you know what I mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually not if it's from Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't rock the Burger King crown? No, I wouldn't. Oh, come on, man. Do we know each other? <laughs> I would totally rock the Burger King crown, but I would put it on tilt, like at a BC. You know what I mean? Okay, it would have to be on tilt, but... Gotta put it on tilt. No. Absolutely gotta. All right, enough foolishness. Mm -hmm. And I am JD, a.k.a. He Who Pods. And today, he who wears specs. Because we have a list, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm Not just specs. any list. You got your specs, too. Well, I don't wear mine because, look, see, if I do it and this happens... And my boy Tez told me a while back, stop wearing your glasses when you pod because we could see all the stuff going on in your glasses and all the light. <laughs> all of the lights. Said it's distracting. And I don't want to distract people. I so I try not to wear the specs. I should have my contacts on, but that's a time. Another, another topic for another time. Yeah. Now, okay. the Oscar nominees are out, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. The full list is out. And I have it here. Okay. So let's yeah. start. You want, should I read all of them or just the ones we care about? Just the ones we care about. All right, Best Picture. Mm -hmm. This is a lot of nominations for Best Picture. Yeah. American Fiction, Ooh. Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, that. The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, The Zone of Interest. I have seen most of those films. Same. Seems I have not seen... Well, I guess I saw half. Yeah, I've seen half. Half. Best Actor. Mm -hmm. Bradley Cooper for Maestro. Okay. Coleman Domingo for Rustin. Paul really Giamatti for The Holdovers. Dylan mm -hmm. Murphy for Oppenheimer, Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. Okay. Best Actress. <laughs> Somebody told me I say this name wrong. I don't want to mess it up now. Annette. Annette Benning. There you go. <laughs> How do you normally say it? Wrong. <laughs> I normally say it wrong. Oh, okay. And I don't want to say it wrong. So, Annette Benning for Nyad. Never mm -hmm. heard of that. Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon. Sandra Hiller. Oh, Hewler. Anatomy of a Fall. Carrie Mulligan, Maestro. Emma Stone, Four Things. Somebody's missing, but we'll get back to that. Oh, we got to talk about that. We'll get back to that. I don't know what's just going on, but we'll get back to that. I actually just stumbled upon an Instagram post where somebody was like, we were snubbed. And I was like, Ooh, okay. But yes, yes, they were. Yes. We'll get back to it. <laughs> Best Supporting Actor. Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction. Robert De Niro for Killers of the Flower Moon. Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. Ryan Gosling for Barbie. And Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things. Best Supporting Actress, Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer, Danielle Brooks for The Color Purple, America Ferreira for Barbie, Jodie Foster for Nyad, Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. Best Director, Jonathan Glazer for The Zone of Interest. Man, I don't even know how to pronounce this guy's name, but Poor Things. Uh, Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer, Martin Scorsese for Killers of the Flower Moon, J. 
Justine Triette for Anatomy of a Fall. What else we care about? There's animated feature film, adapted screenplay, original screenplay, visual effects, original score, original song, documentary I mean, I feature. Like... Oh, the big ones are done, right? The big ones are done. I feel like if we need to cover those after there are winners, then we can talk about those another day. But yeah, I'm with the you big on that. Ones, the big ones are out there. I'm excited about... Um, I'm excited about American fiction getting getting some of those Oscar nods. That was a good film. I know we'll talk a little bit more about that later. We will. Um, you want to? What would you think it. about this Oscar nomination list? I think the specs off now. I think it's a solid list. I mean, there were some there were some good films that came out this year, this past year. Okay. Um, <laughs> Of course, Barbie and Oppenheimer are sweeping. Barbenheimer? Yeah, Barbenheimer is, is right. king, right? Because, I mean, the numbers they did in the box office, and I wouldn't expect anything different. The only, the only confusion I have is, and I think we just get into it, is how did Ryan Gosling get nominated and america ferrera and america ferrera but margot robbie did not get nominated for best actress i'm a little confused and i'm not even saying like that's my favorite performance out of the ones that are listed right but how like how does that how does one of the biggest films of the year one of the most nominated films of the year how how does the main role in the movie not get nominated? How does that happen? Right. Like, did somebody accidentally not put her name there or something? Like, when they read the nominations, was it was it right. wrong that they picked the wrong envelope? Like, what what happened? This I don't know. Wild. Yeah. And her performance was better than Ryan Gosling's. So I think I'm just, I'm just Ken. Right. I think that's why I'm saying it the way I'm saying it. Cause I'm like, if, if, if they were able to nominate him, then why didn't they nominate her? That's the question. That's the question. Question that needs answers. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna come at or, it from a different angle. As, as uh, someone I like to listen to in the, in the, in the podcast world says, questions that niggas is asking <laughs> there you go exactly <laughs> exactly that's that's van Shout out to Dustin Ross for that one. oh i would have never that. guessed that's who it was i thought it was van got <laughs> yeah. you yes. that's cool that's a good one yes that is true well i'm gonna come at it, i'm gonna come at it a little different here okay. i'm gonna pander just a little bit Do it. but truly i would like to know what's going on with the sexism here because is it purposeful? Listen, I got to ask the questions here. Who better than a man to question these type of Please. misogynistic things? Please ask the hard hitting questions. So I would like to know, how is it possible mm -hmm. that Ryan Gosling gets nominated for best supporting actor, which he's going to lose, but we'll get back to that anyway. But how is it possible that he is nominated for best supporting actor when the actress who bodied it, who was Barbie herself, the star of the role and someone who made decisions in the film is not nominated at all. It's huh? just weird. Like, it's but strange. How? How? What the it don't even make the... sense. It's it real, not it's real weird to me. It's real weird. I, and I think it's a little sexist. I got to be honest. It's in fact, I think, and now I'm wilding out with this take, so maybe they'll kill me for this and that's fine. But mm -hmm. I think that is why America Ferreira is there as best supporting actress. Not because she did a great job or a bad job. I think because they needed a diversity pick. And they could say, hey, but recognize Barbie in multiple categories. You know, yeah, that's that. But I could see if they didn't give them best costume design over some, you know what I mean? Like if they just yeah. didn't include them in, in that, in a category like that, but best 
best actress in a film. Like you can't. I don't know. Not a billion I dollar to... film. The only billion right. dollar film of the year, probably. Don't get have... best support, best actress. Yeah, I would have to go back and look at previous years to see like how often that happens, where best actor or best actress don't the person is not nominated for something that's up for best film. Right. I don't know how often that happens. I feel like it doesn't typically happen that way. That's why I'm, I was floored. I, when I found out, I was like, wait, but did they make a mistake? Somebody right. need to retract? <laughs> you know, a writing ballot. Or right. something. Cause... No, I think they dropped the ball. And I think it's really weird that... Ryan Gosling is getting a nod at Best Supporting Actor. I mean, don't get me wrong. They both did a great job. I think that the Barbie film was great. I've watched it. I'd watch it again. I said that before. But yeah. to not nominate Margot Robbie, something's wrong here. And to purposefully nominate Ryan Gosling, I think that speaks volumes. I think that says F this movie that tried to push up women and bring down men. We're going to purposefully, well, I keep saying purposefully, we're going to purposely, not purposefully, purposely nominate the man and not the woman. That's what I think. That's my hot take. And Sexism. Ryan Gosling could go right back into his mojo, dojo, casa house for all I care. Because uh, I think everybody involved in Barbie did a good job. Listen, I don't, I, but. I'm just saying, I don't like the way, it's not his fault. I'm not blaming him. All I'm saying is, it isn't right. You don't think he was kin enough? No, I don't. <laughs> nah, he was good. He did his thing. He was good. I'm not, I think, like you said, I think everybody involved did what they came to do, right? I don't, I don't think there's a dispute about whether people did what they should or should not have done. Yeah, I'm listening. But, I got an idea. I had a thought. Continue. But, what I, <laughs> what I'm concerned about is, was it too many? Was it too many nominations? Like, what was But it? wait a minute. Because if it was, minute, I would have knocked minute. Ryan Gosling oh. off of it, and I would have added Margot Robbie. What's Here's really weird, else. too, what's really weird, too, is mm-hmm. Barbie's not nominated for Best Director. Really? So I Greta, just looked at Greta it again. Gerwig is not... I think it's Greta Gerwig. No. The five movies are Zone, The Zone of Interest, Four Things, that's two, Oppenheimer, three, Killers of the Flower Moon, four, and five, The Anatomy of a Fall. Barbie that's is def- not nominated. This is definitely the patriarchy. That's what I think. Yeah. I think this is patriarchy getting their revenge. Yeah. I think they said, hey, you and your women... You know, you and your little women movie, take your pink and get out of the Oscars. Yeah. We'll give you some some random thing. You'll get an award. You'll get an award. But it's going to be like, probably not Ryan Gosling either because the best supporting actor category is crazy. But probably America Ferreira is going to win best supporting actress. Watch. Just so they can have the diversity pick and say, hey, we gave it to a Spanish person. We gave it to a Latina. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I, I think. I believe that. I think they said you want to poke fun at patriarchy? Okay. We got something for you. We're going to show you. We're going to show you how much is connected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's unfortunate. But what are you going to do? You know? Stop watching the Oscars. Do you watch the Oscars? I'm saying the populace, not me personally. Uh, I don't watch any awards. That's why I'm like... <laughs> you I know, mean, but... since we've been potting, I've watched pieces of awards or I've watched an entire award show here or there, but mm-hmm. it's for the pod. It's for the show. It's for our listeners and viewers who we appreciate so much, each and every one of you. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you. <laughs> right. But <laughs> yeah. besides that, I don't have any interest in it. I mean, listen, I already said the other day, right on this platform... That mm-hmm. I am a hypocrite when it comes to these things. I don't really care about them until one of the people I'm a fan of wins. And I'm like, oh, hey, Oppenheimer. Right, exactly. Christopher Nolan. Exactly, exactly. That part, as the kids say. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so. But that's that's my answer, though. I think the answer is boycotting. I think the answer is taking the power away from these power structures and systems. That's the answer a lot of times. The answer is not, what do we do differently? How do we promote change? Boycott. Take it away. Take away the power they think they have and let them realize that the power is really in the people, not these structures and systems. And then change will come. Yeah. I also think that's why things like the SAG Awards are so important to actors and writers and I, I because it it focuses more on the work and the creative aspect of it and less on the popularity contest of it all. And right? the politics of it all, right? Yeah. So um, I'm glad that they at least have, you know, things like that where, you know, they can be among their peers. I said this the other day, but they can be among their peers and like really celebrate the work that they've done. But real shady, like they, that's, that, that's, some, that's some shady, that's some shady stuff. I agree. But you know, I'm, I'm going to say this because just to move away from Barbie and Oppenheimer, because I feel like we've talked about Barbie and Opp Oppenheimer a lot, just yes. in general. Um, it's hard not to, but I agree. You're right. Um, American fiction, I liked American fiction, and SKB, Sterling K. Brown, is nominated. Um, Jeffrey yes, is. Wright is nominated. They probably That's need exciting. neither one of them are probably going to win them to be honest. Oh, I want it for SKB. Well, well, we'll review the movie in just a minute, but I'll go over the best supporting actor category one more time. I don't think hey. he's going to get it. I mean, first of all, Oppenheimer. Mhm. Mm Robert Downey Jr is probably taking that. Yeah. But I'll go over the list one more time. Best supporting actor you got Sterling K Brown, Robert De Niro, Robert Downey Jr. Ryan Gosling and Mark Ruffalo. I, I don't think SKB is going to get it this time. I mean, it would be nice, but honestly, you saw you saw Oppenheimer. Yeah, I did. I, I thought Junior put his foot in that in that role's ass. Yeah. he was I, like, I, "Oh, yeah, thought hold on, yeah, yeah, thought I was just Iron Man." You think? <laughs> yeah, I think all I could do is Iron Man and Doctor Doolittle. Let me show y'all some some of my acting chops. Yeah, no, he he did his thing. He did. But I guess, you know, you know, I I like You Sterling can say it. What? You can say it. You want us to win too. Of course. Of course. I love It's to tough see, this season though. It is. Um I love to see Especially Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I love to see black people, you know. Our, our 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 favorite black creators get nominated for you know all of the things. I I love right. that. I think that's, I mean that's just a, it's just reaffirming, you know, in a lot of different ways actually. But it like <laughs> to have a seat at the table and to like you know exper experience that through them I is nice for me. So, you know, I love that Sterling K. No, Brown I think that. is nominated. Jeffrey Wright is nominated. Um, Danielle Brooks is nominated. You yep. know, the, is um, D Divine from The Holdovers. She did do a yeah. great job in that role. Absolutely. I think she, I think she made an otherwise boring film. <laughs> More interesting. I mean, listen, it was funny, but... I don't think it was as incredible as it's critics been, seem to uh, think it is. Critics love the holdovers. And again, I don't think it was a bad film. It was just to me, like it was kind of a sleepy film. Yeah. Um, but you know, it was fine. She, yeah. did, she did a good job in it. I agree. What I was going to say is the other thing that makes it hard is it is very clear that the movie poor things is a uh, film industry favorite already because that film just came out at the end of 2022, 2023. And yeah. it is already being 
uh, nominated for many, many, many awards. Mm-hmm. That film only been out like a month. I gotta right see there. it. I really don't even know what it's about. I told you it's like the Frankenstein remix. Oh, right. You did say that. I just feel like I got... I'm one of those people who go and watch the Oscar movies before the Oscars. So I'm like, gotcha. oh, I got to see that now. You know, because it's... I hate, I hate tuning into these award shows. And yes, I do tune in because I podcast about pop culture here and over there. So right. I typically do try to catch it if I can, um, or at least the highlights. But I like to know what I'm, you know, because cause you're right. Like, this is a new film, Poor Things, that just came out. But there's a lot of times where I want to find the release watching, while you talk. Yeah, you'll be watching the Oscars or the Golden Globes and you'll be like, but what is that? Right. And it'll win all the awards and you're like, but where did this come from? Who saw this? Right. So so I like to... Yeah, like see, to look. Four Things came out December 8th, 2023. Well, it made the cutoff. And, and that's what I'm saying. But the fact that it's nominated for so many things tells you that they really like this movie. It may be the movie that upsets some categories. Yeah. Yeah, it probably will. It'll yeah. be really interesting to see what happens with that best film category. Yeah. Um, I'm not I'm not really excited about the best actress category at this point because I just kind of feel like they what did they do there? But like I yeah, said. Yeah, it seemed like they dropped the ball. Yeah. Um, and maybe that was just to make it easier for Emma Stone to win. Maybe. For poor things. Maybe. Yeah. All right, anything else on the on the Oscar noms, or are you ready to move on? No, let's talk about American Fiction. Let's talk about American Fiction. So American Fiction is mm-hmm. a movie that came out last year, also late in the year. I believe it came out in November, if I'm correct. Mm. Uh, I, could, I could check. But uh, we I mean, both saw it. It came out recently. It came out recently. All right, you got it. Yeah, I think it came out in November or maybe even December. Um, actually, it might have been December as well, actually. Maybe. Anyway, whatever. We went and saw it together. Mm-hmm. And uh, we enjoyed it, but we haven't we haven't reviewed it up here. And since it's got a Oscar nomination in a couple categories, we decided that we were going to come up here and do a, a little review. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts? It was interesting. It was yes. super interesting. I I like the way it explored stereotypes. Right. Black stereotypes and and white ones. And white ones. <laughs> you gotta be honest. It explored white ones too. And white ones too. Um and I like how it examined the differences between The different ways that people consume art. Yep. And what is considered art to one person. And not another. Not necessarily being art to or, another. Or one culture and not another. Or one culture and not another. Um, that was really interesting to me. I, I I didn't know. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know how I was going to feel. And honestly, at the beginning of the film... I was a little concerned, okay, because I love me some Tracy Ellis Ross, okay? She's one of my faves, easily. Right. I think she's very funny. I think she's beautiful. She has great style. I just love her. Same. Now, if y'all don't want to know what happened, y'all, this might be the time to turn this off, but... Right? We about to spoil it. Spoiler alert. Right. <laughs> The moment Tracy Ellis Ross died, I said, oh, no, the film is over. (laughs) I said, oh, no, the film is over. (laughs) What is going to happen now? (laughs) Right. And then they brought us a blast from the past. Yeah. Max just came out of nowhere. 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 What's her real name? Erica Alexander. Good job. I knew you would know. Of course. <laughs> I knew you were. I'm terrible with actors and actresses' names. I know. I know. 
But then you tell me something they're in, I'd be like, oh, them? I love right. the stuff they're in this and this and this and this. Did you know they did a short film back in 88? Right. You'd be like, all right, I thought you didn't know who they was. I think it's hilarious because sometimes I don't know the name of the movie and I'll be like, but you know, so-and-so, you know, the one that like got trapped in the, um, in the bunker and blah, blah. And you'll be like, yes, that was whatever. So, you yep, know, that's true. That's, you know what? That's why we're co-hosts because there's balance right. here. We, we got balance here. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> yeah. that's true. Yeah. Max came out of nowhere. She did her thing. Uh, <laughs> she had a little bit of weird situation shit, but to be honest, this was an entirely weird movie. It was weird, but it was good weird. Nothing about this movie was the norm. Yeah. It, it wasn't, wasn't the normal good. story. It wasn't the normal love story. The action wasn't the normal action. Mm -hmm. This is a weird ass movie, but it was funny. It was captivating. It was balanced. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot of things. It was serious and silly simultaneously. Sometimes yeah, in the that. same scene. In the same scene, you had Jeffrey Wright being very serious and Sterling K. Brown being an absolute goofball. <laughs> okay, so can I just say that I loved seeing Sterling K. Brown in this role because yeah. I think he just proved to us once again that he is versatile. <laughs> he 100% reminded he us that he can do anything. Because I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, this is an interesting character. I have never, I don't think he's ever done anything like this, to my knowledge. Right. Um, but he was good. He was funny. Yes. He but was, like you said, he was gay. Serious. He was bold. He was brave. He was sensitive. Yeah. He was advisory. He was many things. And that's one of my, that's one of the things I really enjoyed about this film mm -hmm. is that they showed you how complex characters can be even yeah, in a comedy yeah. film. Because really, this is a comedy. Right. But, but that's you I mean. usually don't see characters this complex mm -hmm. in a comedy. It's usually like, oh, the gay guy, that's all he is, is the gay guy. Uh, the sensitive guy, that's all he is, is sensitive. The whole movie, yeah. he just cries every time you look at him. This yeah. was a role, and not just for him, a lot of the characters right. in this film, even the Issa Rae's character, you yeah. saw the layers of this character and how all of the characters in this film were very well written. And mm -hmm. you saw how a, a true person, many things are part of a person. People are not just gay, just sensitive, just sexual, uh, mm -hmm. just a big brother, just angry, just happy. This film showed you how diverse people truly are. And I think the point was to show the audience, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think the point was to show the audience truly how diverse and different mm. Black people truly are. Yeah. Yeah. The characters had a lot of depth. Um, like you said, each of them, I don't think there was, I don't think there was anyone, at least in the main roles, that didn't have lots of layers to them. And lots of parts of them to explore. Yeah. Um, you would be in a scene, you know, one minute with one person where you're like, oh my gosh, this person is a mess. And then the next minute you're like, wait, but this person has so much going on inside of them. And then the next minute you're laughing because they're doing something funny. And right. I think that was my favorite part, just them being able to switch off and like you said it's well written and you know it's well written because it didn't it didn't agitate you to move from silly to serious right or yeah it was almost seamless silly it was it was very seamless um it just made sense it was super relatable um in a lot of different ways like i said it explores a lot of stereotypes yeah. Um, and, and it also explores a lot of archetypical characters that we probably know in our own lives. Right. Um, so that was, I, I thought it was great. I, I had a good time. I didn't know, again, I didn't know what to expect. I, and, and it Me. was, it was just that though. It was, it was unpredictable almost at every turn. Yeah. 
And it's nice when you have a film that is unpredictable, but it's not like aggressive. <laughs> Maybe that's not the right word, but I'm just thinking like, I watch a lot of um, movies that or, or t and TV shows that have a lot of suspense and they're thrillers and they're, and so you're, you're kind of like always at the edge of your seat and you're kind of anxious when you're watching those things. This was very calm. But it still was very unpredictable. Yeah, and, and something something about that was comforting to me because you know when you're used to being rattled, you're having your cage rattled all the time. Right. It's nice to you know not know what's around the corner, but also not be scared of what's around the right. corner. So yeah, I thought it was a great film. Who you, who you liked better? I think I know the answer, but I'm curious. Uh -huh. Sterling K. Brown's character. Or the or the white director guy. Hmm. Because <laughs> they were both wild cards. They were. I think I gotta go with my guy though. Yeah, me too. I, I thought that was the answer, but I gotta go with him because his character. I think of of all the characters, I think his his had a lot of layers. Yeah, he's, I mean, he stole the show. Yeah, there's no yeah. doubt about that. And it was, it was so easy to watch him and so entertaining to watch him. So yeah, yeah. I mean, and and it helped that you get to see him half naked half the film. And he looks good. Okay, he looked great. <laughs> Listen, he's not gay at all, but, but that man was looking good. He looks good. You know he looks like he's stayed in the gym. Okay, absolutely. I I hope to look that good in my next life. <laughs> This is probably not what happened in this life. <laughs> but maybe in my next life, the universe will hook me up. Sterling K. Brown was looking like he was chiseled by the gods. You oh, know what I'm saying? Yeah, he did. I said, oh, okay. You've been... Yeah. You've yeah. been... After you got done with This Is Us, you said, let me, let me hit the gym. I have a little extra time on my hands. <laughs> Seriously. He's... He's, he's looking I mean, great. He's been working, but... I just... <laughs> and working out. And working out. Okay, he's he's been getting that money. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's right. He's in the gym getting that money. That's right. Very he good. Is. He is. But yeah, so uh, a great film. I would definitely, I would definitely see it again. Yeah. Very okay. easy. Watch. Sweet. Yeah, I agree. It was good. All right. Let's move on to our final topic. Okay. The Breakfast Club. This is going to be a short time. <laughs> Not much to say here. Well, let's see what your take is. Take it away. All right. So for uh, back in, I want to say end of October, early November. Um, okay. Let's backtrack before we even get there. For the past year or so, um, the Breakfast Club has been rotating uh, a third host. Currently, the... Mainstays are DJ Envy and Charlamagne the God, and yep. Angela. Formal, their former co-host was Angela Yee. She left. She moved on to do other things, and the two of them. What the show has been doing is rotating uh, a third co-host in over the past year. Um, Jeff Hilarious has been on many a times. Um, as one of the guest co-hosts and she did a show I think it was a show a comedy show um, back in end of October or November where she and I might be muddying up these details so I apologize if that's not where but that's why I'm started. looking some stuff up but I think, that's so what, I think that's what it was she did some sort of event and she announced that she would be um, officially the third co-host of The Breakfast Club. So that happened. And then weeks weeks have gone by now. And as far as I know, she has not been back to the show. Right. And Charlemagne and DJ Envy are being questioned. Charlemagne specifically. <laughs> They've been questioned about what happened to their third Host and when are they getting one? And Charlemagne just keeps saying, I have no idea. In fact, him and Envy a couple weeks ago had a conversation 
on the show where they said, we don't know what's going on. We were rotating hosts and then now we're not rotating hosts. And it's weird having to talk to each other only. <laughs> we don't know what's right. happening. So they have made it seem like they have no idea what's going on with this co-host situation. Yep. I don't know if they're trolling us and they know exactly what's going on, but they're just trying to save face for the media or if they real if there really is some sort of issue and right. that they're not, they, that they only have part of the information or they truly just don't know what's going to happen next. Okay. Right. So you just, you just don't know. That's your stance. My stance is I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's. I don't know what to make of it. And I keep checking every couple of days because we've talked about bringing this up on the pod. But I keep checking and I can't find any additional details. People have said maybe she wasn't contractually uh, permitted to announce that when she did, and maybe that created some issues for her. Um, people talked about, you know, losing your leverage when you do things like that in terms of negotiating your contract. And so I don't know. <laughs> There's no detail. Okay. There's no information. No one seems to know. Right. Well, yes, you're correct. Angela Yee left in December of 2022. Most of 2023, they were rotating guest co-hosts. Mm -hmm. And yes, she did say something that basically announced she was going to be the permanent host of the Breakfast Club, Breakfast Club as the third slot. Since then, yes, everything you said is on point. Now, today she responded to something they said. They called SZA this generation's Mary J. Blige. She said those dudes are trash and they should shut up. And... Uh, yeah, I have the quote here, actually. Hold on. I pulled it. I thought maybe you, you knew. Even, so you, you wouldn't even tell me there were new developments. I mean, I just found it right now. I didn't know. Uh, according to Vibe.com, mm -hmm. it says here, uh, uh, but um, 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 weeks after announcing she soon joined the team, Hilarious took to Instagram to call DJ Envy and Charlemagne the God, quote unquote, trash for comparing SZA to Mary J. Blige. These niggas trash, she began. Envy, shut up. I know artists be pissed when old heads do this because now everybody negative comparing SZA to MJB and it ain't even her fault. She has her own identity. Uh, okay, so here's what I think. I think in the words of Ice from the Joe Budden podcast, everything is a rollout. I think this is a rollout. I think we don't know which thing it's a rollout for. It could either A, be a rollout for Jess Hilarious to become that permanent third person, or mm. B, the rollout for the person we don't know about, who's in the tuck that's about to be the third co-host. Because all of this hype is calling, bu causing buzz behind this third slot and behind who is going to be this third person mm. and Maybe they got somebody in the stash. Maybe it's not just hilarious, but this is how they're rolling out this new person by causing questions, by causing a buzz, by causing friction, allegedly, because I don't think it's real friction. Um, and maybe that's what's going to be the rollout for. Oh, yeah, I didn't know, but we had, we, we had an NDA sign. We couldn't say nothing, but Dashing D starting March 1st is the new co-host of The Breakfast Club. And this rolls it right out because everyone's been waiting, everyone's asking, everyone's tweeting, everyone's, you know, uh, uh, spectating, you know, everyone's just trying to figure out what is going on. And so I think this is the perfect rollout and it seems like that's what's happening to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I think. Now, is it just hilarious? Maybe, maybe it is and things are just not fully contractually finished. Um, and that's why she is chiming in. Maybe, maybe her chiming in is just sarcasm and her way of continuing the buzz and the rollout and the conversation. Or maybe not. Maybe it's somebody brand spanking new that we don't know, or maybe it was one of the people that did guest co-host, but they just haven't been who we think might be the, the front runner. All possibilities. That's my take. I think it's a rollout. I can see that. Well, that's why I said, I, I, I don't know if they're 
they're trolling us. Like, I, I, I find it hard to believe that Charlemagne and Envy, Envy don't know anything. Right. Um, I don't think that that's the way... I think maybe years ago, maybe that would have been the case. But today, I think they have a lot of autonomy um, in what they do over at the Black Breakfast Club. So it's not impossible, but probably unlikely that they wouldn't know what was going on. At right. least Especially when you're supposed to be the big boss of Black Effect. I would think right. you got some, pull, like, I don't... some info, some intel. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't think that Maybe if it was a different radio show, then I would say. Right. Mm-hmm. But I feel like for them, I don't, I don't, I don't see them being completely in the dark right. about what's happening or not having any say. So, you know, agreed. But it remains to be seen. I think it's. What do you think about it? If it's a ro- let's say, let's say next week, Monday morning, we find out just hilarious is back and she in fact is the third co-host and they were just messing around with people then what nothing you think it was, you think it was regular good? i think it's good if it was effective okay did it work did it bring in numbers did it keep the show buzzing did it boost ratings because to measure good means we would have to know the goal what's the goal i don't know mm-hmm. yeah and i also don't listen to the breakfast club enough to me either it to matter <laughs> so yeah yeah That's i used it. to listen to donkey of the day every day but just that like 20 minute time block, and then that was it so god but yeah we'll see what happens right. we will and that ladies and gentlemen is weeknights bye That's our show